To walk you through the steps of making these plastics with embedded enzymes, we first start with our enzyme and the protectant for the enzyme. These are both in solid form, so what we'll do first is we'll dissolve them in water. The reason to do this is so that we can mix them together. So we use a vortexer to mix them at high speeds and to ensure that the enzymes, the Pac-Mans, find their armors and are able to put them on. Once we fully shield our enzymes with our protectant, we then want to remove the water from them because the water is incompatible with our plastic production process. In order to do this, we first freeze our solution and then use a machine called a lyophilizer in order to take this ice and turn it directly into water vapor to very gently remove the water and preserve the structure and integrity of our protected enzymes. So there are two standard ways to make plastics, and this is general to all plastics, not just our special ones. The step that we make that's different is in both the processes, all we do is we add our protected enzymes as a really small additive. So talking about process one, which is solvent casting, what we do is we take our plastic, which comes in pellets, we dissolve it in solvent, which is a, some kind of chemical, and then we also dissolve our enzymes that are protected into there. We mix it, and then we drop cast it onto a smooth, flat surface, wait for it to dry, and then we can peel off a plastic film. We have a small traditional extruder in our lab that can make small scale uh, films. And these days, a more popularized home version of this is a 3D printer, which effectively does the same thing. We first experimented degrading our plastics in water, and we tried them at various temperatures with various different compositions of enzymes and protectants. And we found that when we put them in water, within 24 hours, you can barely see a plastic there. And within a week, we looked under it with a microscope and saw that there was nothing left. There was almost no microplastics there. When you see for yourself that you make this plastic, you put it in the water, you come back to lab the next day and it's just gone, there's nothing there, it's a pretty exciting feeling. To check the compostability of our plastics, we took soil, we buried our plastic inside the compost soil and we left it in a heated condition for a week. And then when we came back to it, we tried digging in the soil to find the plastics and it became a scavenger hunt to try to find the pieces of plastic that were left inside. To compare our plastics to those currently on the market that are marketed as so-called biodegradable or compostable, we took those plastics and we put them into water and soil in the same way without adding enzyme into them. And after a week, after a month, when we pulled them out, they looked almost identical with only very minimal degradation observed. Our world has many kinds of needs for many different kinds of plastics, thick, thin, high temperature use, low temperature use. And at the end of the day, we want to be able to tweak and design the formulation of our enzymes and protectants such that we can degrade them all.